In this video, I'm going to show you how I integrated Make.com and Crew AI in order to automate my content creation research. Because this is a beginner friendly guide, not only am I going to walk you through this step by step, but I'm also going to give you all the Make.com files, all of the code, all of the resources and links that you're going to need in order to implement this on your own, whether it's for your clients, for your business, or maybe you're working on your own YouTube channel. But before we get started, first, I want to give you a high level overview of how this automation works and why I decided to make it in the first place. So this automation, like many others, came from a need to want to save more time. Once I started getting views on my YouTube channel consistently, I found that I was having trouble balancing my time between working with clients, managing my school community, and also continuing to upload and make videos for YouTube. Now, I was a little bit surprised that from all these tasks, what was still taking up the most time was the YouTube channel. And it wasn't the video editing because I had already hired someone to help me with that. It wasn't the thumbnail because I had also hired someone to help me with that. And it wasn't even the filming. It was literally the research part that came before making the video. If you're trying to grow on YouTube, whether it's because you're trying to get that YouTube ad revenue or you're just trying to get leads for your business. So there's a little tip for you guys that are just starting out. It's important that you watch the content of other creators, especially for those that pretty much already have it figured out and are doing extremely well on YouTube. This could easily take a few hours of your day and you don't just want to watch their videos. You also want to go through the comments because this is direct feedback from the viewers as far as what was good about the video, maybe what they didn't like, maybe what could have been improved or done a little bit different. And from there, you can pretty much get a good idea of the video you want to make and just hit the ground running. But again, this process can take many valuable hours of your day. So this is pretty much how the automation works. This automation works by you giving it a playlist link. So, you know, you're going to make a playlist on YouTube. You're going to copy and paste this playlist link into a Google Sheets. From there, we're going to connect to a custom API web application, which is going to extract the transcripts as well as the comments from each of those videos. We're then going to get all of that data and we're going to give it to agents powered by Llama 3.1 as well as GPT 4.0. And we're going to ask them to analyze all of the transcripts and all of the comments from these videos. These agents are going to be solely focused on making a report for each of these videos. Once we have all of these reports ready, we're then going to take these reports and give it to a set of crew AI agents whose job is going to be not only to analyze these reports, but decide on which video from all of these is going to be the best one for you to focus on for your YouTube channel. And once they decide that, they're also going to put together a detailed content strategy for how you should make your version of that video you want to focus on. And to keep it simple, all of this data is going to be saved on Google Sheets. And if you're stressing out a little bit because maybe you saw the word API here or web app and you know maybe you're not too familiar with that and are afraid it's going to get too complicated, or maybe you have no idea how we're going to tie it with Crew AI. The way we're going to do it for this project is we're going to be using a platform called Replit to host our code and host our applications. And it's literally going to be a one click deployment. It's going to be super simple. And again, I'm going to give you all the code for all of these parts. So you really don't have that much to stress about for that section. And this is pretty much what the output looks like. Once I paste this Google or rather this YouTube playlist link, I get a list of all the videos that were in that playlist. As you can see right here, these are all the links for each separate video. And for each one of those videos, I'm going to get a video analysis based on the transcript that that video has, but also an analysis on all of the comments that that video had. You can see right here, pretty much what I'm asking for is a summary of the video. I want to know what technology they're talking about, and I want to know what important keywords are mentioned in the video. And same thing for the comments. We have a little bit of a report which talks about what users liked, what users didn't like, themes in the comments. And then, you know, instead of having to spend three to four hours watching videos or however long it was taking before, I can just probably spend about maybe 10, 15 minutes reading these reports. But even at that, I don't really have to even go through all of them because that last crew AI set of agents is going to make a decision for me as far as which one of those videos would probably be the best fit for my channel or the goals that I'm trying to accomplish. And we can see that right here in this final recommendation, which has a very clear strategy based on the reports that we gave it. So all in all, this is just going to save me a ton of time. So let's go ahead and get started so you can start applying this too. So first, what you want to do is we're going to go ahead and go to make.com. You can make a free account if you don't have one. Then here on the left, we're going to click where it says scenarios. This is where we start building the automation. And we're going to go to create new scenario. And because we're going to be working with Google Sheets, that's going to be the first module that we're going to look for. So let's just look for sheets. And then we're going to look for the option that says watch for changes. And to set this up, we're going to create a new hook. We're just going to call it playlist hook. And right here, it generates the hook for us. 
So all the hook is, you're gonna keep hearing this throughout the video, it's basically an address to where you can send web requests. Whenever we make changes to our Google Sheet, this is gonna be where our Google Sheet is gonna send the request to communicate with Make, and that way it can trigger our automation. So now the next step is we're gonna set up the Google Sheet that we're gonna be using with this webhook using the Make app. As you can see right here for this Google Sheet, this is gonna be the one we're gonna set up with Make. So we're gonna to go to Extensions, Add-ons, we're gonna to go to Get Add-ons, and here you can look for Make. And here I have it installed, but you need to install this Make for Google Sheets module. Once you do that, we're gonna go back to Extensions, and you'll see an option right here that says Make for Google Sheets. And then we're gonna click Settings, and you're going to get this window on the right that gives you the options for the tool. This is where we're going to paste that webhook that was generated earlier in the make.com page. We're just going to paste it on there. And then you're going to click save. You can see right here, it will save successfully and just press OK. One quick tip, if you use multiple Google accounts within Google Chrome, make sure that the account that you're linking to web.com is the main default one. Otherwise, this tool is probably not going to work. So now we can close that. Let's just add some headers right here real quick. We'll call this result playlist link, then YouTube videos, then video analysis, comment analysis, and final recommendation. All right, so after this, we're gonna go back to our make.com page. And here, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a web request module. So just again, click in here, or actually just type HTTP. And then here we just click the one that says make a request. And this will give you a rep request module. So there's a couple of things that we need to fill out here. We need the URL, that's where we're sending the request. We need to fill out method, that's the kind of request that we're sending. We're gonna be sending data to this request, so it's gonna be a post request. For body type, we're gonna send the data in JSON format. So here you're gonna click raw, and then content type, we're gonna put JSON. One more thing you do need to add is you wanna go here to where it says headers. Here we're gonna type content dash type and then in value we're going to put application slash json and i know maybe this seems a little bit rushed or maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense right now but this is pretty standard protocol for whenever you're making web requests so just think of this as requirements we have to check anytime we want to make a web request and you can see here there's still a couple things we're missing we're still missing where we're sending our request and that would go up here and then here at the bottom we're missing what content we're actually sending, and we would fill that out here in JSON format. As far as where we're sending the request, we're actually gonna be using our own custom API. Not only is it gonna be our own custom API, but we're actually gonna deploy it as well. And the really cool thing about this is that it's gonna be free, it's not gonna cost you more on make, and deploying it is literally gonna be the click of a button. It's the easiest I've ever been able to deploy anything, and I'm super excited to show this to you guys. So in the description or in the document inside the description, you're gonna see a link that says replit.com and then it's gonna be the rest of the URL. When you click the link, you're gonna to go to the replit page. If you haven't made an account, you should make an account so you can copy this code. And literally with this, with the click of this green button, you're gonna be able to copy this API that I made. And this is gonna be what's gonna give you access to all the functionality that we need. And it's also gonna be where we have the Korea project written out. And just like in order to copy this, all you had to do was make an account and go to fork. Deploying it is gonna be just as easy. The hardest thing about using this is gonna be literally just putting in your API keys. But we're gonna to get to that too, so don't stress about that just yet. And once you copy the repository, you have your own copy in your account, you're gonna get a screen that looks a little bit more like this where you'll still have all your files and you'll still be able to run commands in here. Similar to if you were using VS Code or Cohere or whatever code editor that maybe you're used to. Actually, let's just do it from a new account so that we can make sure we cover the whole experience. All right, so we're signed in a new account, guys, and this is what it's gonna look like. Like I was telling you, you're gonna see here the option to fork. That's just copying the code and saving it to your account. So let's go ahead and click this. You can call it whatever you want. It's just to save it in your account. We could just leave the name or we can put something like agents API and then we're gonna click fork. So here it's still loading up. Then when it's done, you'll have options to edit it, change the text and whatnot and run commands, which is what we're gonna do. So first we wanna make sure that this runs. There's a couple of things we need to add. Really just the API keys in order for you to be able to use this. So let's try running it real quick. We're gonna to go to the shell tab right here and we're just gonna do python main.py. And we can see right here that our application is running. Now, this web view came up because a part of the script is meant to run as a web app. And all that means is that we're gonna be able to handle web requests. If you recall, here in our make.com integration, 
we're using the module HTTP, which again, it's meant to make web requests. We're trying to set up the URL we're going to send the web request to. And that's one of the things that our script right here does. It's going to handle that request. Now, the way we're getting make.com to communicate to this script is going to be through that URL. And we actually have this address up here. If you click right here, you'll see this long address. So we're actually going to copy that and we're going to paste it in our make integration. And we're not done just yet. There's a couple of things that we need to add to our script right here in our freight to make sure that one, we can retrieve transcripts and comments from YouTube and two, that we can successfully use Crew AI because we're going to leverage ChatGPT. So we're going to need to add both of those API keys. And the way you set these up in Reddit is super easy. You're actually going to go here to the left and in this corner and tools, you can have a few options. We're going to scroll down to the one that says secrets right here. You see it's highlighted red because in my version, I have my own API key saved on there because you fork this or copy this to your account. It's not going to give you access to that. So you need to add your own. So we're going to click here and we have this panel that appeared. And as you can see here, it's blank because it's a new account and there's a copy of it. And just reference, you're going to need your YouTube API key, your Croc API key, in your OpenAI API key. So let's go ahead and retrieve our Google API key, which is what we're going to use for the YouTube API. And the website you're going to go to for that is going to be console.cloud.google.com. From here, you're going to be taken to this page and we're actually going to set up a new project. So we're going to click in here, click new project, and we can just call it whatever. This is just for getting the API key. We're not going to use it for anything else. You can see here, finish loading. And then we're going to click this menu on the left. And here we see where it says API and services and enable APIs and services. We're going to click right there. And once you click enable APIs and services, you're going to get taken to this screen here. We're going to go to credentials and then we're going to go to create credentials and we're going to select API key. So we're going to copy this and make sure to keep your API key safe. Don't share them with anyone or delete them or change them if you do. And we're just going to put this in our replit application. We're going to click add secret right here. And just like that, we have our YouTube API key. These next two are super easy to get. So just bear with me. I know it feels like we haven't really gotten started, but trust me, this is literally the hardest part of the whole thing. All right. So next we're going to get our Grok API key. And for you to get that, you just need to go to console.grok.com. From here, you can go to the section on the left that says API keys. And then you're just going to click create API key. I'm going to copy that. We're going to add it on here. Add secret. And last, we need the OpenAI API key, which I'm sure you know by now. You just go to platform.openai.com. So once you go to platform.openai.com, you're going to click here on the left where it says your profile. And then you're going to go to the tab that says user API keys. And just a side note for this, for Grok, you don't need to pay anything. For the YouTube API key, you don't need to pay anything. For ChatGPT, even if you have a paying subscription, the API key credits are separate from that. So you're going to have to add a little bit of funds in order for you to be able to use their API keys for custom applications. And again, here, we're just going to go down and create new secret key. I'm going to copy that and add it to our agents. And just like that, guys, congratulations. We literally did the hardest part of this whole thing. I know it kind of feels like we're all over the place. We have a make.com account. We start a scenario. We have an open Google Sheets, and then we have this thing on Replit that for some reason is going to work with that. And we're going to talk a bit about that as we get through those steps, but I didn't want to make the whole video just a very long lecture on theoretically how this works and why it works. But I want to make this with you guys and also explain to you what it is that we're doing as we put it together. So now we're going to go back to our make.com scenario and we're going to start on the first part, which is extracting the video links from a YouTube playlist link. And all we're going to need is these two modules. So this one just checks if we change anything on the Google sheet and this is going to send the request using our script to pull the video links from the playlist. So how is that going to work? Okay. So remember when we said here, this is where we're sending the request. So this address that we have right here, this is how we access the server where our application that we have on Replit lives. So first things first, we need to start up our application again. And remember when we tested it earlier, all we had to do was go to shell and I believe it might still be running. Yeah. So this shows that it's running because we see it on here, but let's restart just so you can be clear on that. 
So we're going to exit using control C. So you see how it exited out there. That means that the application is not running anymore. So let's go back down here. Let's just clear this up. And again, the way we start up this application is simply by doing a Python main.py command. Again, Python main.py. Okay, cool. We see the URL here. This hasn't changed and this shows that it's up and running. And what do we need this command to get to run? Well, here in our script, in our main.py file, is where we have all of the logic to start up our web application. This kind of web app, we created it using the Flask library, which is just a Python library that lets you create web applications. And there's a couple of things I want you to note here, even if you don't have a lot of programming experience. This part that says route, you see it repeatedly throughout this app. You see it again here, app route, and down here, app route, and a couple more times, app route, app route. Don't mind what's in between there, but that commonality is something I want you to take notice because after app route, we see here app route, retrieve YouTube transcript, and then the forward slash. And then we see something else that we saw earlier, right? We saw post. So without getting too much into the code, this section right here of our web application is what handles the logic for whenever we receive the request to retrieve the YouTube transcripts. So all we need from here is this part, the forward slash retrieve YouTube transcript, and we're gonna paste it here. And make sure you only have one slash, there's two right now. Okay, interesting. What this means is that when we go to our application, which is located on this server, as we mentioned earlier, we want to send the request specifically to this route. So what we're saying is that when we send this application a request, we wanna send it specifically to this section of the code, which is retrieve YouTube transcripts. And as you see here, this is where we're telling our web application what to do when a request is received to this route. And just to quickly summarize, what this section of the code does is it's going to take the data we send it's going to expect that in json format and from there it's going to take out the data from that request and it's then going to use a youtube transcript tool in order to retrieve the youtube transcript and now reading this route we're actually not using the one right now to retrieve the transcript we're actually using the one right here that's retrieve playlist videos because that's what we're doing for the first part we're giving it a playlist and extracting the videos out but in a similar fashion Whenever we send a request to this route, we're going to process the request in JSON in order to extract the data that's in the request. And then we're going to use a function on a tool called get playlist videos. And this is what's going to give us both the links for the videos as well as the count of how many videos there are in the playlist. So actually, let's copy this again and let's paste it in our URL up here. All right, so now it looks like we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and run our scenario. We're just going to click run once. And we're going to put wait for new data. So you can see it's waiting for a change in the Google Sheets. So let's get our YouTube playlist link, which is right up here. You can see you have some videos from some creators that I like to watch. And then I'm going to paste another playlist link cell right here. So paste. And then after enter, it will auto save. Cool. And if we go back here, you see that it's no longer doing the spinny thingy because it ran. We see this one because our scenario did run. We see the output. Okay, cool. So we got the value of the playlist and let's see if we have the links. So we don't have anything that changed here. Why is that? Let's look at this low error that we see right here in our request module. Okay, bad request. So obviously we didn't do it correctly. So what are we missing here? Well, we didn't put anything in request content. Yes, we made a post request to this specific URL, which is where our app lives or our script lives. And we did it to a specific route, but we didn't actually send any data. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to send it JSON formatted data from that Google Sheets that we have access to. You can see right here that it's actually showing us the value for what was entered, which is this playlist link right here. So let's start typing it up in JSON. That's going to be an open bracket. Then with double quotations, we're going to say list URL. After we're going to do the colon. And right now we want the value for the playlist. So let's go ahead and select this. And we're actually going to put this around quotations as well and then close the brackets. So let's save this right here. Let's actually delete this and let's run it once more. So run once, wait for new data. Let's go ahead and paste the URL here once more. We see here that the web request is loading. And while that loads, you can actually go back to your application. And here you can actually see some of the logs as well. We see we're getting an error here, type 500, and the message says access not configured. Let's go ahead and look at make as well. Okay, internal error 500. So we're not getting a response. Let's see what could be causing this. 
So what I'm thinking right off the bat is that it is receiving the request. If it wasn't, we would just get a 400 error. So anything I can think of would be that maybe there's something wrong with the API key that I used, or maybe I didn't set it up right. But if I look back at my playlist, I did set this as a private playlist, which means that I really wouldn't be able to retrieve information like this unless I was using a method that was authenticated in a different way. So let's actually fix this and just set it to public. We're going to refresh this. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so we're going to run it, wait for new data, paste the playlist, and then we're just going to look at the logs right here. So we're still getting a 500 error, but we're no longer getting the access not configured message, which is still progress to some extent. All right, so I looked into it for a little bit, and what we should have done that we didn't do is we're going to go to console.cloud.google.com. And remember when we got our API key? Well, there's actually a step we need to do. We actually need to go to enable APIs and services right here. And let's look for the YouTube API. We're going to click YouTube Data API v3, and here we're going to click Enable. So sorry about that, guys. Completely forgot about that step. Let's go ahead and try it again now. So run on once, wait for new data. I'm going to paste our playlist link. It's saving. Let's go ahead and look at our logs within our app. And we're still getting a 500 error. So if we look at the way the request was sent for the request content. I don't know if you can see right here, but in this section, where we should be sending playlist URL in the actual URL, it's actually not sending anything. So we definitely got to fix that. So here I thought value one would send it. But if we look here, value is actually blank. So let's go by the values in the column. We're going to select column A right here. Let's just make sure it's between the quotations. So let's delete this part and select A. We saved it. So now when we make the change in the playlist link column by adding the link, we should be able to send that in the request to our application. So let's try it one more time. Wait for new data, paste it on here. And look at that, we did not get an error. So let's look at this real quick. And here we see in playlist URL, we actually send the link. And for output, we have the count of six videos, and we have the links for all the videos. So that's perfect. So now that we got back this list of YouTube links, what do we want to do with this, right? Because we sent the request, which was by giving it a YouTube playlist, and we got this response back, which as you can tell by these brackets, where after video links, we have these box brackets or square brackets. We're getting this back in an array. And you can see this because of the separation by commas. An array is just a fancy way of saying in terms of data that we're getting a list back. And remember, what we want to do is after we put in the YouTube playlist link, we want to get the list of those video links that belong to that playlist. And for each video link that we get, we want to do analysis on the transcript for that video, as well as analyzing the comments for what the user said in that video too. And we're going to do that for each and every single one of those videos within that list. So the way we're going to extract all of these video links separately from this response that we got is going to be with this module right here called the iterator. So what the iterator does in within make is it's going to take an array, which is what we have right now in terms of all the links, and it's going to separate it out. So what is it that we want to separate out? Well, we want to separate the video links within this data section, which is not showing up right now, but I think we should be able to map it out if we run it one more time. So we can't run it yet. It says right here that a transformer should not be the last module in the route, which means we can't end it with this. So what we're going to do is as we take out each one of those links, we're actually going to save it to a variable within make. So let's set that right here. So we're just going to look up variable and set variable, variable name. Here we'll just call it videos array because that's what we're splitting up. And the value is just going to be the video links too. So let's save that. All right, so let's go ahead and run it one more time. Run once, wait for new data. We're going to paste our link in here. Press enter. Let's go ahead and go back and look. And cool, we see that it passed all of them. Let's take a look at the results in here. We got the input of the data from the API call. And then it looks like the output was the same. Let's see if it broke it up. So if we look right here for the output, we're getting one bundle which has all of the data for all of our links. So bundles in make.com is kind of like, I guess they're groups of data, but really what we would want to see ideally when we're setting this as variable 
is we would want to have multiple bundles, one bundle for each video link within that playlist. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing that quite right. And that's probably because our JSON response is not being parsed out. So if we look right here at our web request module, I did notice that for parsing response, we said to no. And if you read right here, it says automatically parses responses, which we do want to do that. Otherwise, we'd have to manually go in and do it. So let's go ahead and click OK and try one more time. So let's run once, wait for new data. Let's go ahead and add this on here. And let's go ahead and take a look at this module. Now we see for the output, we have one bundle, but we do see that all the links have been separated. It did pick it up as an array this time. Earlier was just showing the entire JSON response unfiltered, unparsed. And if we look in here, then you see this is a little bit more organized. But again, back to what I was saying earlier, we still want this to be separate bundles. Here on the iterator, we're receiving this as a single bundle. It's now picking up the fact that this piece of data has one field, which is count, and another field, which is an array called video links, but it's still showing it as a single bundle. So what we're gonna do is, now that we look at these fields of data, we can see here that now that we're parsing the JSON response, we're actually detecting the video links array here. So let's actually select that because we want the iterator to go through the array that is the video links. Right now, we don't care that much about the, this count section. So let's click OK and we'll do that for this one as well. So now when we run it one more time here in the iterator, you can see that now we have one, two, three, four, five, six separate bundles. And then here within the variable where we're saving it, we also have the six pieces of data saved separately, which is what we want to do. So now let's actually go ahead and put those video links within our Google Sheet. So we're gonna add a new module on here. It's just gonna be the Google Sheets module. And I think it's just called update row. So cool, let's select that one. And then here we're gonna fill this one out. Same thing, we're just gonna choose our file that we're using. We have that in here. And remember within our sheet, we do have the header on here or the name of the column. And we want each row to update according to the video within the list. Cause if you recall here, we we're actually doing a playlist. So we don't want the row to just update and then overwrite the previous one as we do our analysis. We want it to go one at a time. So whenever we fill one of these spots or one of these rows, whenever we move on to the next analysis, we'll fill up the next one and the next one. So that's why we're counting the amount of videos that we have within the playlist. So the way we're going to make sure that happens is for our row number, we're actually going to select the bundle order position because if you recall, the point of the iterator here is to, yes, take an array and split it up, but it's also going to go through it one at a time. And we're going to use that part of the iterator later on, but that's one of the neat features about it. It can break apart data and it can start the process of performing different actions in that data one chunk at a time. So we want the row number to be based on the bundle position. And actually here, make sure we use the plus for make. We have to use the operator they have on here. So let's select addition right here and then just one. And the reason why we're doing plus one is because remember at the top, we have the header title or rather we have the column name. And we actually wanna update this in column B right here. And the piece of data that we're gonna want on here is gonna be one of the links from the array of links that we have so we have that here. Remember, we saved it to our variable that we called the video array. And here it's pointing at the first one because it's the current position we're in. But we want the link that we select to be based again on the bundle or position. So we're going to select that one more time. So really what we're saying here is that the thing that we want written within this row is a link from that list of links that we have. How do we decide which link that we want? Well, based on which link we're iterating through, because remember, we are using the iterator, we want to select the position of that current one that we're going to be working on. And if the iterator is making a lot of sense right now, just keep in mind for what we're trying to do is we want to go through each of these video links. For each video, we want to do an analysis on the transcript as well as an analysis on the comments. And when we complete doing that once, we're going to do that for the next video and the next video and the following one after that. This is what I mean when I say we're going to iterate through it. We're going to do a series of steps in order. And if you see here in the iterator, there's multiple bundles and each bundle has the link stored. So if we're in bundle one for the first link, that's position one of that set of bundles. Same thing for bundle two. That second link is in position two. And that's all we're saying right here is that we're saying we want data written to this Google sheet on this row. And the data that we want written for that row is going to be based on the position that we're at for that particular bundle. So let's delete the link and try it one more time. Let's go ahead and click run once, wait for new data. I'm gonna paste the link on here. 
enter the save we see it running and we see that it's writing on here let's see if our sheet got updated and now you can see here all of the links for all of the videos within our playlist so now we get to start working on the cool part we're going to be working with the agents first we're going to work with some make agents which we're going to link directly to our ChatGPT account and as well as our grok account and then we're going to get started on the crew ai part of it which again that's already built out if you look through the files on the replit repository that's already there so you're more than welcome to start looking at it or playing with it if you want to pause this video for a bit but guys i know we've covered a lot at this point in the video and if you're new to make you're new to crew ai or you're new to automation spirits i really want to congratulate you because you're honestly going through this pretty fast just by following along with this video and I know I said it's for beginners and it is. That's why I'm walking you through this step by step. And even though it may seem like it's a lot at once, I think the best way to get you to learn is by exposing you through doing cool projects that you're actually going to use. And let's summarize where we're at so far, just so you can start seeing and getting more familiar with the pattern of what we're doing here. I know there's some technical stuff going on in the background that maybe you don't feel too confident about. Maybe you don't feel like you understand too well. But the big picture of what's going on is if you look at our first module is we started with Google Sheets. We set it up in a way that whenever we made a change or whenever we put some data, which was our playlist link, well, we're going to take that playlist link and then send it somewhere else. Where were we sending it? Well, we send it to our API that we have written on Replit. And after we send that link from Google Sheets to our API, we make a request to get some more information. The information we want is the set of links for those YouTube videos. Once we get these links within this module, we pass it to our iterator. This is what's going to split up that data because all we did was send data from Google Sheets to our API, then receive data back, and then we want to split it up with our iterator. We save that to make.com, and then we pass that data back to Google Sheets. That's it. As simple as that. 10, 20 second sentence that I just said. Yes, it takes some time to set up with make.com. And yes, believe me, it takes practice. It takes spending time with it, breaking and getting frustrated to learn these things. But it's also the fact that this makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, makes you feel like it's a little bit out of the scope of what you understand. That really shows that you're learning something new and that you're acquiring another skill. Just want to give you a little bit of encouragement as we move forward. So now for the next step, we're actually going to make another web request. So let's go ahead and select this HTTP and just make a request. Now, if you can guess, where do you think we're making this request to? We already have all of our videos, so we wanna take this first video and we wanna ask for the transcript for it. Now, how do we do that? Well, remember earlier how we set up this one where there was a couple of things we need to fill out. We know we're sending data, so it's a post request. We know we need to fill this out this way because that's just how web requests are done. So we're going to copy this. OK, cool. And we know we're also going to select raw and JSON application. So another thing that I like about make.com is we can just copy this module. Actually, let's delete this one right here and let's paste it. And then we're going to connect them like this. All right, cool. And there's a couple of things that we do need to change on here, because even though we are using the same link for the server, we're not going to be using this route. This was the route that we used in order to retrieve the videos. Now we're going to use a different one to retrieve the transcript. So let's actually delete this part for now. Everything else stays the same. And we're also going to delete the kind of data that we're sending, because for this one, we want to send a single link in order to get the transcript for it. So what is the route that we're going to use in order to retrieve the transcripts? Well, let's go to our Replit API and here in our main.py file, we can actually just type, if you don't want to read through all this, let's just type transcript and you can see right here in line 58 in app.route retrieve youtube transcripts that's one that we're going to use and this is again the route or this is the part of our api that handles that request and if you look right here in line 65 this is where we're using the youtube transcript tool you can actually click into it and this will take you to the python file which is actually right here youtube transcript tool here in our youtube underscore transcript.py this is where we have the code written out that has the logic for how we're going to leverage the YouTube API in order to pull the transcript data. Now, this isn't a coding video per se, but just want to show you real quick where that's all located since we are going to be using it. But if coding, writing out scripts like this, or even automations is something you're trying to get better at, definitely recommend you join my school community. That's where we have live calls. That's where we have more resources to get you to become more proficient in automations and programming as well. So again, back in our main.py file where we have our YouTube transcript route, 
We're going to copy this and we're going to add this to the URL of our web request module. So let's paste this on here. Let's click OK to save it. And now for request content, what do we want to send? Well, we want our script to process one of the YouTube links. So that's what we're going to go ahead and send. And when you click here and make, it's kind of telling you what data is available in order to add to your request. Now, if you recall, we saved it to a variable. We want it to be one of the YouTube links. And remember, because the iterator goes through each one of the bundles at a time, we want to select the one for the position we're working in. And the reason why when writing arrays, we're putting that position in the center, because in programming, whenever you make reference to an array, you're not selecting the item itself, you're selecting the position of the item. So if you're using numbers, you would select position zero, position one, position two, between those two brackets, because we're not saying the actual number, we're seeing a value that is storing a number. We're going to use that as the placeholder for our array location. But remember, this has to be formatted in JSON because it's a web request. So this has to be between open and close quotations. And we're going to send this as video URL. And remember, you also need the open and close brackets at the beginning and at the end. Then save by clicking OK. So now let's try running it and see what kind of response we get. So here I cleared up my sheet. I'm going to run my automation and paste the original link on here. Actually, let's wait and see if they populate, which they should. Okay, so we got all the links there, which is cool to see it in lifetime. And we're not going to get us anything else on the sheet because we haven't done that yet. But for our web request module, we should get a response, which it looks like it went through. And if we look at our web response module, you see that because from the iterator, we had six links. We did six separate web requests once we got to this module. And if we look here, you see the number of operations. If we open this up, you see where we sent the first URL for the output. We got response 200, which means the request went through. And if we look at data on here, we got the transcript back. And here you see the transcript for that video. So in this video, I'm going to show you. OK, cool. That's one transcript. Let's check. We want the second ones. Okay, let's go to output on here, data. Cool, so there's a separate transcript. And we don't really need to check these, but let's just go through one more. And yeah, these are different transcripts. So that's pretty cool, right? That we're sending that request and now we're already getting all the transcripts back. And what did we do before when we got data back from our first request? Well, remember we saved it to a variable within make. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna add one more module and click set variable. Here we'll just call it full transcript. And for the variable name, this is actually our second request and it's just transcript. Then we're gonna click okay to save. And now that we have our transcripts, now that we've been able to save them, it's time to pass them to our AI agent so they can start analyzing them. So here we're actually going to add our Grok module. So let's just look for that here. So it's actually going to be, let me see, I believe it's going to be create a chat completion. And Grok is free and they are offering Llama 3.1, which is awesome. So definitely want to take advantage of that. So we'll leave it as 3.1, 70 billion. And then here in messages, we're going to add item. We're going to click the assistant role. And here in content is where we're going to write our assistant prompt, which I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to be able to have access to some of these resources. Here in these files, I already wrote out what the video analyzer description is going to be. So you just have to copy this and paste it on the description. So let's just paste that on there. And I forgot to mention, but before you're able to access Grok like this within make.com, you're going to have to authenticate. You're either going to sign in or you're going to put in an API key, kind of like how I showed you earlier when we used the API key for our Replit repository. You can use the same one. There's no problem with that. So here we have the assistant role. We have the prompt for how the assistant is supposed to behave. So now we have to pass on to it the data that's going to come, which is going to be the actual transcript, right? So we're going to click add item one more time here. We're going to select user because remember it's that chat back and forth format, but we're not actually going to type into a chat like we do in chat GPT or in the Grok interface. We're actually going to pass that right here. So for the actual content, we want it to be the actual full transcript. So we're going to click here under content and then we're going to select full transcript because remember previously on the module that we have here for tools, that's where we're going to be saving the actual transcripts that we received back. And then we're just going to click OK to save. Another quick tip, if you want to stay a little bit more organized within your make automation, you get right click the module and you can actually rename it here. We could just call it whatever we're calling our variable, which is full transcript. And we could do that over here as well. And we'll actually just rename this to. So 
we'll just call it transcript analyzer agent. Awesome. We already know that we're going to want to save the response we get from Grok. So let's actually add one more module. And it's going to be, again, just a variable module, set variable. We'll call this one transcript analysis. And here, all we're going to save is our response from Grok, which we can see up here. So now let's go ahead and run our automation, make sure that it's all working as we expect. So you can see here, that was pretty fast. It already made the first call to Grok, and it's going to do it three times. I know originally we we're doing six videos, but I actually took it down just to three so that it wouldn't take as long. And just because we're on the theme of make.com, I only kept the creators that do make automation. So definitely check these guys too, if you're getting interested in make. And great, we see our variable saved on here. So let's check out how that turned out. We see three operations as we expand that. We're gonna look at the output, which is this field right here that says transcript analysis. And great, we got a response that we wanted. Maybe this doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but if you look at the prompt that we wrote out, I was very detailed as far as the kind of analysis I want. I want to extract data such as like new technologies they talked about. I want to know about examples that they presented. I want to know about new tools that they're talking about. I want to know about how they're trying to appeal to the audience. And I specifically want to know about AI related themes and concepts that they're talking about. And then in my prompt, I spent quite a bit of time just describing how I want the report to be formatted. We could see in the summary that we get a brief summary of the transcript. We get a list of the technology that they talk about. We get a list of some of the keywords that they mention, which is also important if you're trying to figure out what kind of video to make or what you're trying to talk about. And we see here that that was just for output one. Let's go ahead and look at output two, similar format. And that's for output three. And we can expect a pretty consistent response. So this is great. I'm really happy with these results. And something I was actually expecting to happen was if you fuse Croc before, I'm sure you know that they have a limited amount of tokens that you can use per minute or per request per day. So we're actually going to add another step. Rather, we're going to handle the situation where if we get an error because we run out of tokens, instead of using Grok, we're going to default to using ChatGPT as well as a ChatGPT assistant. This way, you'll leverage using a free API call to Grok. That way, you don't have to use up any ChatGPT credits. But if that fails, you'll still be able to complete your task using ChatGPT's agents. But before we do that, let's make sure we get our video transcript analysis in our Google Sheet. So we're going to add a new module. It's going to be Google Sheets. We're going to go ahead and do update row right here. So we already know it's going to be a Google Sheets module. So let's actually go ahead and just copy one of the ones that we have here. Copy this module. I'm going to paste it here. And then let's go ahead and edit this one to make sure it does what we want it to do. So what's cool is that we're not going to have to worry about this whole bundle or position thing that's already written on there. So that should make sense because we're following a similar order. Completely fine. What we are going to change is where we're writing the data. Remember, we want to go with different columns. So let's delete this because we don't want to change anything in column B. What we actually want to change is in column C, which is the video analysis column. And what we want on here is the result from the analysis, which remember we saved on here and we call this variable uh, transcript analysis. Let me write that on here. So let's put that in there. So now when we call our Grok AI agent and we save the response to make.com, make.com is then going to place that within our Google Sheet, particularly in column C, which is where we want our video analysis to be saved. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the error handler for in case we get an error if we run out of tokens when we're trying to use Llama 3.1. And the way you can do this in make.com is we're going to right click this Croc module right here. Here you see the option that says add an error handler. And you see how this new branch came out. This is kind of like saying that if we get an error or if this you know particular module or action isn't completed, we're then going to default to doing something else. And that's pretty much what error handling is within make.com. So let's look for ChatGPT. So we have OpenAI. And let's see, we're going to use Message and Assistant for this one. And if it's the first time you use OpenAI within make.com, it is going to ask you to sign in or put an API token. Once you sign in and it loads, you're going to see a screen like this where you're going to be able to select the assistant that you want to use for this particular task. Now, here it shows the ones that you have already saved. I'm going to show you how you can create it. But that's what's really cool about this particular module is you can just drop down and click it. So the way you're going to create your assistant for ChatGPT, you're going to go to platform.openai.com and then you're going to click up here where it says dashboard and it's going to take you to a screen like this. This is where we're going to write out the details for our assistant. If you haven't created one before, you can click this green button that says create. 
developing a new module for you. And here, we're just gonna call it the same thing that we call it within the Grok agent. So if you have that Google Sheet handy, you can literally just copy that. We're just gonna call it Video Transcript Analyzer. Remember, within our folder, we have this available. So click it, open it, and again, just it. So we're gonna copy this. It's gonna go in the instructions. We'll just call it Video Analyzer. Here for temperature, we're actually going to lower it to 0.7. That seems to be the sweet spot for what most people say. And I believe it auto saves, so you should be good to go. Just refresh and double check. Cool. So we have our video analyzer assistant. Let me just call it demo. So I know this is the one that I'm talking about. Cool. So now we're going to go back to make.com. And here we could just click this little refresh button. Here we see our video analyzer assistant. So let's select that. And in case you want to switch it within your assistant options, you can actually select the large language model you want to use. If you want very, very cheap token use, you can select GPT-40 mini. But I think with GPT-40, that's priced pretty competitively now. So I would just leave it at that. And now for this next part, we're going to leave this as user because this is the message that is being sent to the assistant. And for the message content, similar to how we did before, we're sending the transcript that we already got from the video which remember we saved that in this variable over here for make.com. We just called it full transcript. So within your message field in your open AI module, let's go ahead and click full transcript. And then after that, just make sure you click OK to save it. And just like we want to save the response from Grok to a variable within make.com, we're also going to do that with ChatGPT. So we're going to add another module. Set variable is what it's called. Click it. We can call it the same thing. We could just call it transcript analysis. And the value that we want stored within this variable is going to be the response or the results from ChatGPT. So just click results right here. And then remember, after we get our response and save it to a variable, we want to put that in our Google Sheets. So we can actually just copy this module because it's going to be very similar. So click copy, click paste. Make sure you link it to the right module. And then here we're actually going to edit some parts of it because while we do want the transcript analysis value, we don't want it from this module up here. We want it from the one right here. So let's delete this part right here. And then we're going to click the one that shows up here, which is related to module 16, as you can read up here. And that's module 16 down here as well. So let's select this one and click OK. As your make projects start getting a little bit longer, a little bit more elaborate, you do have this cool feature down here, which is just called auto align. So that'll make it look nice and neat. It didn't really do much right now because we don't have that many branches yet, but just for future reference. And also periodically, just keep in mind to save your make.com scenarios because I did notice that it seemed like sometimes it did have auto save or sometimes it didn't. And there was a couple of times where I closed it without paying attention. And then I kind of had to start over on some sections that I thought were safe. So keep that in mind. So we're going to run this a couple of times. Hopefully the second time we get an error, it will default to our error handler. But if it doesn't, we'll just disconnect and reconnect one of these branches. And, you know, we'll see how it works with ChatGPT versus with Grok. Let's go back to our sheet and delete everything we have on here. Let's just make sure that we have a copy of our playlist link. So now there's nothing here and it's saved. So we're going to click run once, we'll wait for new data. We're going to paste our playlist link on here one more time. And we're actually just going to watch this on here. I like to see the new data pop out and hopefully it should be clean. But now that I'm thinking about it, I actually took a pause and stopped this automation or rather I stopped recording. So we're going to get an error because yeah, we're not able to make our API call because right now our API service is not running. The reason it's not running is because in the free version, if you stop using Replit for a while, let me refresh it up here, it's just going to stop running, right? You could have it to where it stays on indefinitely, but you do have to pay for that, which, I mean, if you're not super committed to this, of course, you, you probably don't want to do that. But just restarting it, super easy, right? We're just going to go to python main.py within our terminal. And we should see here, right here within our web view, that this is up and running. It just shows that little hello world just to show you that it's up and working. So let's give it a second. So once this loads up, this just means that it's up and it's working. So that's great. So let's go ahead and try our scenario one more time. We're going to go to run once, wait for new data. You see right here that it's waiting for a change within the Google Sheet. That's awesome. Let's paste it on here. And let's make sure it's running through all these. Very nice. I like how fast that goes. Okay, cool. It did one inside of the Google Sheets. 
So we have one link in one summary. It's working on the third one, I believe. Great, we got the third video analysis right there. And that was all pretty fast, right? And remember, we took it down from six videos to three, so that's great. And we didn't run out of tokens. We didn't get any errors. That's why you could see right here that it did all three operations for all three transcripts of all three videos within Grok. But let's actually run it one more time and make sure that Hopefully by now we should be running out of Grok tokens and that should give us an error. So let's try it again. And that's kind of strange, right? That this time around we're hoping to get an error instead of hoping for it to work correctly. But, you know, error handling is a pretty important thing. So some of these transcripts for these videos, they're fairly long. So I'm surprised we haven't gotten a token limit error. We did do this back to back, but also they might have extended the token limit within Grok. So that's a good thing, right? Okay, we didn't get an error again. But now what I'm gonna do, instead of just to make sure that the branch for ChatGPT also works is, I'm actually gonna disconnect this. I'm gonna unlink this as well. And I'm gonna link this part. So now after we get the transcript, I'm actually gonna go directly to the ChatGPT module, just cause I wanna make sure that the data is flowing correctly from when we get the transcript to sending it to our ChatGPT agent and you know placing it in our Google Sheet, just because I want to test that out. All right, so one more time, wait for new data, writing the playlist link, and let's see how it flows from one to the other. Okay, so it's going to our OpenAI agent, that's great. And we got one transcript in there, that's awesome. Now, I am noticing that these responses are a little bit slower compared to Grok, so I think that's another good reason why we should prioritize using the large language model that Grok offers, but I mean, give or take, that's gonna be your preference. And it looks like it finished through all three. So yeah, we have our link for each video. We have our summary and that's pretty, pretty good stuff. This one is formatted a little bit differently, but that's up to you how you wanna, you know, rewrite the prompt or format it. So we're able to verify that our Grok agent works and we're able to verify that our ChatGPT agent works in case we get an error. So let's plug that back into how we had it originally. So we want to send the transcript first to Grok and then Grok is going to save that to a variable. And if for some reason we get an error with Grok because the video is too long or the transcript is too long, we're going to add an error handler within Grok and that's going to point to, well, it looks like it's not like reconnected. So I think I'm going to have to delete this, delete anyway, add error handler. Let's look at OpenAI or maybe I just didn't know how to do it, but that's okay. That only takes a second. We're loading up our connection. So let's just select our video analyzer agent one more time. Remember for message, we want the transcript from this module right here. That's module nine, actually. Cool. We click that on here and we're just going to press OK. We can just plug this right back into our other variables. And we need to select the result from that ChatGPT module. Click OK. And yeah, we're good to go. So originally when I started building this, when I got to this point, I thought it was a pretty good stopping point. And if you've gotten this far in the tutorial, definitely pat yourself in the back. We're going through a lot of different technologies. We're going through a lot of different concepts within make.com, within just software engineering concepts, talking about APIs, talking about web requests. So the fact that you're here, I think that's great. You're definitely knocking out of the park. And you could really just make a lot of good use of this part of the automation. But when I started thinking about it, Something that I do when I watch video content to try and get inspiration from other creators is not only do I go through the video, but I also like reading the comments because the comments is going to be super important feedback from the people that are watching it, from the people consuming the content. That's where they're going to give their opinion on maybe different content that they like. Maybe that's where they'll critique it a little bit, or maybe that's just where really show appreciation for the parts they like the most. So because we've already gone so far as connecting to a YouTube API, getting all that set up, we know we're able to pull the YouTube transcripts from the videos with the same API. We can also pull the comments from the video. After we pull those comments, we can then pass them to an AI agent and also perform a similar analysis to the one we did in order to get a big picture of what it is that the users like or what it is that they want from this kind of content that we're analyzing. So let's take a look at our make.com scenario. And this is where we're at with it, right? So let's just think about it systematically. We're checking for changes within our Google Sheets. We're using an API to retrieve those links. Okay, cool. All of those links are saved on here, that's fine. And then we set that as a variable or 
we're storing that within make.com in this videos array. Okay, cool. So that's where each link is going to be stored after we extract all of them. Okay, great. So from here, we then put the links on our Google sheet. Okay, we added them at the row. And then once we put that link for that individual video within our Google sheet, that's when we start the process of sending another API request in order to retrieve and analyze the transcripts with our AI agents. So after we've analyzed the transcript for this video, which we know happens at this point, afterwards, keeping that same video link or that same information about the video, we want to take another step to now pull all the comments and analyze them. We know that step's going to happen somewhere around here. So what we're going to do now within make.com is we're actually going to use what's called a router so that whenever we finish the sequence of events that happen within this part of the workflow, after wrapping that up, we're going to go through and take another set of steps. And the router is going to be what's going to help guide our workflow in that next direction. So we're actually going to unlink this right here. Let's just move this up here. And now we're going to add the module called router. So we're going to delete these empty branches. Let's delete that. And then we're going to point our retrieving video request API call back to the router because this is the first set of steps we want to occur. Let's fix that up because it's looking kind of ugly. So now it's nice and streamed out. And again, after we go through all these steps of retrieving the transcript and analyzing them, well, we're going to add a second route. This route is going to be about retrieving the comments and analyzing in a very similar series of steps, just like we did with the transcript. So for the second route, let's go ahead and also add another web request. So we're going to click this here. We're going to go through, select make a request. And I'm sure by now you're getting the hang of the pattern. We're going to make this a post request because we're going to send data. We're going to fill this out as content type. And then for value, it's just going to be application slash JSON, similar like we did in the other ones. Body type, it's going to be raw. Content type is going to be application JSON. Content, we'll fill that out in just a minute. And yes, we want the response parsed out. And here in the URL, remember, we're going to use a URL from our Replit web application, but we're going to change the route. So let's save it for now, even though we're not done. Remember right here for our YouTube transcript, we're using the retrieve YouTube transcript route. We have a similar one that's already written out within your Replit application. It's just called something with comments. We have it here in line 73. It's just retrieve YouTube comments. So let's go ahead and copy that and let's get the rest of our URL, which we can just copy it from the web request module right here. Make sure we only have one slash. And just as a recap, the place I got this link from was from within our Replit application. And that's just the address right here for your Replit server where the application is currently running. So let's save that. And remember, the other thing we need for completing our web request is the data that we're sending and has to be formatted in JSON. We recall here, we sent it an object that we just called video URL. And that video URL was just a link that we got from the array, which was the list of the other URLs that we had gotten together. So all of this right here is going to look the same within our web request for the comments, but we'll just call it comments or something different. Let's see if we can copy and paste and we can. And since we are sending the same video URL to this web request, we can just leave it like, like that. That's no problem. And yeah, that's looking good. Now, if you want to troubleshoot it and do it one module at a time, if you're just starting out with make.com, I definitely recommend that. But if you're a little bit more familiar or you want to see and test yourself a little bit, um, you can pretty much copy the outline that we did up here for the transcripts. And if you feel confident about it, you could just start laying them all out and just compare them. That's what I'm going to do right now. And then we'll do a little bit troubleshooting and, you know, if it's not running correctly, but more often than not, if you're building something new, you want to build it one step at a time. You want to test it out because if you try to put together a long sequence of events and something breaks, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see where the errors are occurring and that can get frustrating. But because I already went a little more in depth in this earlier part of the workflow, I do kind of want to speed through it just a little bit more. And just to kind of like show you the similarities in the pattern that we're following as we build out these kind of automations. So let's rename this real quick. We'll rename it retrieve comments. That's just for visibility. That doesn't do anything else. And then just like we saved it to a variable, whenever we got our response back, we're also going to do this here. So we're, let's look for the set variable module. Once we click the set variable module, 
we'll just call it video comments. And what the variable is going to be is going to be the data from the response. Now, if you look up here within this data one, we haven't actually made the response yet. It's just a part that the module shows you by default. So now we're going to click it. But if you look at our earlier request where we asked for the transcript, we could see on here, we saved this because when we get the data, a part of the response within that data is an object called a transcript. Because we haven't made the request on the retrieving comments route yet, it still doesn't really know what the response is going to look like. It's kind of just giving this to us as almost like a placeholder. So we are going to have to go back and correct this in just a second. Now we're going to add our grok agent. So let's click that. It's going to be chat completion. We want to keep Llama 3.1. And remember, if you forget how to set any of this up, just look at your earlier module. Remember here, we added one more item. Within that item, we selected assistant. We copied and pasted our system prompt. And then also for our second item, we selected it as user and then we pasted the response, which was the transcript. So let's do that in this one. We want to add one item. This can be an assistant for the content. Just go to that folder that I'm going to link to you within these resources. I already have it written out for the comment analyzer agent prompt. So you can also just highlight all this and copy it. And we can go ahead and then paste it into our content selection or into our content field right here. Scroll down here and we're going to select video comments right there. Click OK and save it. Great. So after we send our comments to our comment analyzing agent through Grok, what is it that we want to do next? Keep in mind the pattern that we've been following. We now want to save this variable. So let's go ahead and add another set variable module. And what are we saving to this variable? Well, we're saving the response from Grok, which is going to be the analysis of all the comments we sent it. So we can just call that comment analysis. And again, the variable we want to store here is just going to be the results from Grok. So let's add that on there. Click OK and save. And this is getting a little bit messy. So let's go ahead and click our little auto align or magic wand here. And it kind of straighten it out. That's pretty good. And after we get our response for our agent, we then want to save this to our Google Sheet just to kind of keep all that in one place. So let's go ahead and add that. We can just copy this module, paste it on here. And then we can change some stuff in here for it's, for what it's expecting. We don't want to update the video analysis column. We want to update the comment analysis column. And what we're going to put within this column is going to be the variable we stored from Grok. Remember, we're right here. We call this comment analysis. So let's rename this real quick. And that's what we want to store within this column right here. It's column D, the comment analysis column. So let's go ahead and set that real quick. And then we're just going to press OK. Let's save that real quick. So now let's go ahead and try it. We're probably going to get an error at this point because we're not being super specific on the kind of response we're expecting. We get back an object called transcript from our response. Here we haven't specified the name of the JSON object we're getting. So that's completely fine. If we get that error, we could just come back and fix it. Again, let's delete all this. So we have a completely blank sheet, nothing on here. Let's go ahead and click run once, wait for new data. We're going to give it our playlist link on here. Let's watch it run from the scenario. I do like how much faster it's running on Grok and here it's already doing the second part. So it looks like it was able to complete it. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see it's on the second bundle or in this case it would be a video link and it goes through and it extracts all that. So it'll do the video analysis for one video and the comment analysis. Right now I just finished the video analysis for the third video and we can see here just populated the comment analysis, which is amazing. So it didn't break, even though I didn't specify the name of the JSON object on here. So let's take a look at this module right here. This is where we're supposed to be storing the comments. And if we look at this little magnifying glass, we can see all the operations that went through. And we could see here within the bundle one variable value, what was stored. And here we do see the comments for the video, just kind of like scrolling through them. And we have three separate ones. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so that's great. I'm glad we didn't have any parsing problems, but I do want to save this and refresh it. 
because usually I've seen that happen before where you don't specify what property or what object from the JSON object you're trying to point at. You might get a little bit of an error. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So it still only shows it as data up here. So we're just going to leave it like that for now. And I mean, I'm guessing since it's parsing it out, it's good to go. It's just saving the entire response. No problem. As long as we can get it to our agent and do the analysis, I think that's completely fine. So now we still need to do the error handling for this, which again, it's going to be very similar. We can go on ChatGPT, create our agent, and it's going to be the same process that we did for the video transcript analysis. So let's just right click here within Grok. We're going to select add error handler. And this is just going to be an open AI module. So here we see the message and assistant. And if you haven't created the comment analysis assistant on ChatGPT, remember it's just in platforms, open AI, you're going to go to your dashboard and then on the left here, you're going to click where it says assistance. Here we have an assistant that we haven't really defined. Same thing from within that folder I'm going to give you access to. We have that Google Sheet. Here you can just copy this for your prompt or you can change it up however you want. Let's go back to OpenAI, paste that on here. We're just going to call it comment analyzer agent and then just dash demo for me to be able to differentiate it. Same thing, we want to take the temperature down to 0.7. And now you want to check that your agent saved. Just refresh your page real quick. We still have it on there, so it should be good. And we're going to select our assistant here. Let's just refresh this real quick. We have our comment analyzer agent. Perfect. So let's select that. And then we're going to leave this second part for the role as user. And for message, remember, we actually want to receive all of the video comments that we extracted because this is going to be the agent that is going to perform the analysis in the event that the grok module is not able to do it for you all right so we added that so let's just click our save button right here and let's auto align it once more just to get it straightened out and then last we want to add the response in the event that we do use chat gpt to our google sheet so let's add a set variable module click on here and we're just going to call this comment analysis. And what we want is the results from ChatGPT. So click OK. We'll rename this real quick. Comment analysis on here. And now is when we copy this module right here, because this, again, this is the module that sends the response to your Google Sheets from your ChatGPT response. So let's copy that one. We're doing a very similar version of that on here. And remember, what we want to start on here is going to be not the transcript analysis, but the comment analysis variable. And click OK. And once you finish that, make sure to save your scenario. So where we're at right now, you already have a super amazing tool that's basically going to help you save a lot of time if you're a YouTube content creator and trying to figure out what kind of video you should make next. Or maybe you have an AI automation agency and you're just trying to provide more value and save more time for your clients. When I got to this part myself, this was also a spot where I thought it might be a good idea to stop. But then I realized that if I could let agents do this kind of analysis within the transcript and the comments, why not take all those reports and pass it to another set of agents to make the decision for me as far as what kind of video I should make next? Because this would be a more complex task. That's why I decided to integrate it with Crew AI. And that's the next part that we're going to be setting up right now. And in order to prepare for the data that we need to send to Crew AI, let's just talk about it at a high level and see what it is that we need to do. If you recall, we have the video analysis and the comment analysis, and we're getting each one of those for each of the videos that we're scraping the data from YouTube. As of right now, we're doing that for three videos because it's three videos within our playlist. So we have to be able to gather all of this data or rather all of these reports or analyses and feed them to our Crew AI project via a web request. And if we go back to our make.com scenario, we see that this branch at the top is where the original retrieval of the transcript happens as well as the analysis of the transcript. Afterwards, we retrieve the comments and then also do the analysis on the comments themselves. We do this one time for both, two times for the second video, and then a third time for the third video. Once we've got all this data and we've placed it in our Google Sheets, that's when we wanna go and gather this data again and pass it to our Crew AI crew. And if you recall, within our make.com scenario, we started that process of getting all the information for each one of those links for each separate video, 
at this module right here, which is where we use the iterator in order to extract that array of all the links and then go through one by one and make all of those requests for the analysis we needed. With that being said, because we want the next step to happen after all the steps that occur from the iterator and so forth, we're actually gonna unlink it here and right in between here, we're gonna add another router, similar to the router that we added here, which basically dictated that this branch or this set of steps would occur after this series of steps. By that same notion, after we finish all of these steps, we're then gonna start another branch or another sequence of steps. So let's go ahead and add a router right here. Let's delete these blank ones. So this is the first series of steps that's gonna occur. Then we're gonna add one more right here. And from this point on is where we're gonna start gathering all the data we need to send crew AI in order to do our next analysis on all of the videos that we've gathered. So we know that for all of our previous agent responses, we're storing them in column C and column D. So for the next module within make.com is we're actually gonna select the Google Sheets module. So let's go ahead and look that up. And then we're gonna use one called get range values. So from here, let's go ahead and select the file that we are gonna be using. And for range of values, again, we know it's column C and column D. So let's go ahead and type column C2 because we don't need the first row, that's just the title. We're just gonna select up to the 20th row of column D. If you wanna make that longer because you know, you're know using more videos or something like that, then that's up to you. That should be fine for now. So because we wanna put all of that data from multiple cells together before we send it in our web request, the next module we're gonna use is called the text aggregator. So let's look that up. And what this can do is it's going to take all of those cells that we selected from that range, which was from column C to column D, like you can see right here in source module, it lets you select the get range values module, which is 35 here they match. So let's select that. And even though we're putting all the text and all the values from those cells together, we still want to be able to label them so that our crew AI agents can differentiate which ones are related to video one, which ones are related to video two, and which ones are related to video three. So we're gonna click show advanced settings. And here within the text box is where we're gonna specify how we want this data formatted once it's all put together. And just to show you real quick how I wanna format it, basically I want it to look like video dash one. And then here at the center, I want the contents of the video analysis, as well as the contents of the comment analysis. And then of course I want to end the tag so that would be the results from column C and column D put together with the label video one. And then once it starts on video two, it will also start with a tag like this. It says video two, and you'll see the similar pattern for the rest of the videos within our Excel sheet. So how can we get the data that we're putting together to be formatted like this? Well, just like with the iterator, which works in bundles, same thing with the text aggregator, it's gonna go through each row and it's gonna put that data together one bundle at a time. So here, rather than hard coding or handwriting the literal one, what we really want is for it to be a number, which is gonna represent the position of the bundle that we're currently working in. So if we're working within the first row, we want the first number. If we're working within the second row, we want that number as well. So here, instead of putting video one, we're gonna put video dash, and then we're gonna click this value right here, which says bundle order position. So if it's working in the first row, we'll put a one. When it goes to the next row, we'll put a two. And same thing for the end tag, right? Instead of video and then actually typing the one, we're gonna type the bundle order position. Now we want the video analysis. And if you recall, for our video analysis, we have that in column C. So same thing, let's delete this. And we're actually gonna put the column, which again, we're getting from module 35, and again, that's gonna be column C. And for comment analysis, same thing. We're looking at our module 35, and that's gonna be the values of column D. So now when it starts putting all this text together for each row, it's gonna start formatting it like this, keeping in mind the position it's in for both the starting tag and the ending tag. And then in between there, it's gonna put the actual contents of column C and column D. And then from here, we could just click save. So now that we've put all of our data together, we still cannot send this in a web request because we need to format it into JSON. Remember those opening curly brackets and closing curly brackets? 
that all has to be done before we can send it within a web request. Lucky for us, within make.com, there's another module that we can add that's literally just called JSON, and it just says transform to JSON. Here we just have to select what we want to transform to JSON, and here we can see that for module 36, our text aggregator module, it's gonna convert that into JSON for us. So we just select the text here and click OK. It's saying this can be the last module. So before we test out these last few modules, let's go ahead and add one more just to set the variable. So we're gonna click set variable, variable name. We're just gonna call it test. And for value, we're just gonna put the JSON string. Let's click save within our scenario and let's auto align it. Here we have our blank Google Sheet, so let's run it one more time. I'm gonna paste the link here, go back to our make scenario. You can see right here that it's running through pretty fast for getting all of the analysis for all of the videos that we talked about. You can see within our Google Sheet that it's still completing these as expected. Now we can see where after it finished all of these, you see where it's three for all of these. It then went back to this router and it came over here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the last module right here. And this should have video one, video two, video three. So let's look at the output. You can see right here where we put the tech for video one. So that's the beginning tech for video one and then the ending tag for video one. Let's check for video two. Again, we see that for video two. And let's check for video three. And again, this is make extracting all of the data from all of these cells right here within our Google Sheets and putting it all together into JSON format, getting it ready to send it as a web request to our crew AI. So the way we're gonna make that web request to Crew AI, it's actually gonna be included within one of the routes or one of the endpoints which we have in our custom API that we've been using for all these other API calls. So if you go ahead and take a look at the project, you will see that in line, let's see, it should be line 34, we have this route that says Crew AI Analysis. Within this route, we make a call to a function called execute crew tasks. And this connects you to another Python file we have within this project called crew.py. And this file, if you read through it, this is gonna be where all the logic for handling the crew AI process is gonna be included. And what I wanted to do for this, I wanted to take care of two main tasks. One, now that I have all these reports, both analysis in the comments and analysis of the YouTube transcript, I want to give all of these to an agent and have this agent decide which video should be the best focus for my YouTube channel, or rather which one of those videos from all those different analysis should be the one that I should pay more attention to in order to either recreate it or make some version similar to that that I should focus on for my own channel. And you can see that description right here in line 26 of the crew.py file. So if you wanna change that to serve a different purpose, this is where you would edit that. And then the second part of that is that once that first agent decided on what video to focus on, I went to give that data to the next agent and the role of this next agent was gonna to be to be the strategic analyst is what I call it. So he was basically gonna take that data and then decide what the content strategy was gonna be, what the focus was gonna be, what the actual execution strategy was gonna be in order to creating a video, in order to create a video that covered those topics, those keywords, and emphasize those important changes that were mentioned in both the comment analysis as well as the transcript analysis. Again, right here, you'll be able to see how I wrote out those descriptions for these agents, and you're more than welcome to edit it because remember, you're making a copy of this code. You're gonna have your own version, so you're gonna be able to change it whatever you want. As you scroll farther down, you'll also be able to see the level of detail that was included as well as for the task description, for both the content analyst agent as well as the second agent. And this to show you just how detailed you need to be if you want your agents to perform adequately. I'm not gonna go too much into detail as far as why I wrote the description this way, 
because again, this did take quite a bit of fine tuning. And also the reason why I'm giving you access to this code is because I want you to be able to read through this, look at it and also test it for the other use cases that you might have. One thing you'll notice is that I'm very direct as far as explaining the kind of data I'm giving to the agent, as far as the kind of requests that I'm expecting from the agent. And also I'm very specific about the kind of output that I want from the agent. So please don't be afraid to play with this, change it up however you want, delete it all, add any new agent ideas if you want to try. The point of this is for you to be able to have access to a very easy to set up API that you will be able to tie in either with your make.com scenarios or whatever no code automations that you might be using that already have the capacity to do API calls easily. So now let's go ahead and finish that up in make.com. So hopefully by now you've been getting a little bit more comfortable with making web requests or API calls. And that's what we're going to do in this next module. Very similar to the ones we did before, we're going to click add module and then we're going to select HTTP request. So again, we select the make web request right here. And remember, because we're sending data, there's going to be a post request. I know I've repeated that, but you know, just want to make sure it gets very clear and you're able to learn that from here on out. For headers, this is just like filling out a form. This is just content dash type and then application dash JSON. Body type is just going to be raw. Then we're going to select JSON. And again, we do want it to parse the request. And of course, we can't forget where we're sending the data. Again, we just have to copy our link right here from Replit. We're going to add that on here. And then remember, after this last slash, we have to add the route from within our API that we want to add. So we want to send it to the one that's related to Cree AI. I think it's called Cree AI Analysis. And we have that here within our main.py file. And that should be in line 34. It's just slash Cree AI Analysis. So we're going to copy and paste that at the end here. And then let's just click OK and save it. And now we have to add the data that we want to send through this web request. Again, remember, it's always going to be open brackets for JSON. Here, we're just going to call it reports and then colons. And you can see right here at the top, for us, this previous module, the one for setting the variable, is what has the data stored in JSON format, which we processed before. So for this part, we're just going to select it right here, test. And then we're just going to put the closed curly brackets because you can see right here, it already starts with double quotations. And now we're going to select OK. So now before we run it again, let's go ahead and go back to our application. We're going to click refresh here just to make sure this is still running. If you don't get this blank screen, you'll see something that it's not running at the moment. So make sure to do Python main.py if it stops running. So just for future reference. So now let's go ahead and run our scenario. I'm just going to wait for new data and we'll actually just start it from scratch. I want to see the whole process and then we're going to paste our playlist link and let's go ahead and take a look at it. We can see here it's uh, running pretty fast, going through Grok. We're still getting the results we expect. We got the comment and video analysis for the first one and it's still going nice. So we can see right here that it's sending the request. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and check the logs within our actual application. Looks like it's running. So what's going on our end? Great, so if we look at our logs, we see that it ran the whole Crew AI process on here. And if we take a look at our make.com scenario, we see that this successfully was completed. For the output, we can look at the data that was sent at the end. And it's just that very long report that we wanted. So now that we know that this is running correctly, let's go ahead and add one more module, which is going to be to get the data from this request, set it to a variable, and then add it to Google Sheets. So let's click this one right here, add module, Google Sheets, and let's look for a row. It's going to be update a row. Let's select the file here real quick. Once we select the file, the column where we want this can be the final recommendation next. And actually let's add our variable first. So let's disconnect this for set variable. We're just going to call it reports. And for the variable value, we just want the message from our HTTP response. This is module 41 and you can see in here it's module 41. So that's what we want. So let's click OK. And then from this variable, we're going to then send it to our Google Sheets. So let's finish this one up. We want this to be in our final recommendations and it should be module I'm guessing 40, 43. It's not showing module 43. So let's just click run this module only click. Okay. We're gonna get an error, but that should refresh it. So for final recommendation, we're going to select this one module 43 and for run number, 
we just want it to be on the second row after the columns. So let's just select row start two right here and click OK. So that should fix it. Row number. So I'm still getting an error, but let's try running it one more time. So we finished running it again and got no errors. It kept saying that there was no row number, even though we had added it. So I figured it would be fine. And if we take a look at our Google sheet right here, we can see that we got our final recommendation on row two right here. And that's going to be this really long report, which focuses on the video concept, enhancement strategies, so on and so forth. So basically just a very detailed report on the things that I should focus on or, you know, whoever's using it should focus on when making this video based on the analysis of the previous one, which again, if it's between watching a whole lot of videos and having to make up your mind about it, this is definitely gonna save you a ton of time. Now, if you're at this point in the tutorial, I really want you to stop, take a minute to just congratulate yourself, you know, throw yourself a little party because just look at how much you've done already. You set up a whole AI automation, leveraging the strength of no code tools. You integrated this automation with AI assistance from both the most advanced AI models, including Llama 3.1 at the time of the recording of this video, as well as GPT 4.0. Not only that, but you also integrated your scenario with a custom API, which leveraged custom AI agents from Crew AI. So if getting through this whole tutorial isn't an accomplishment, then I really don't know what is. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're trying to figure out how to incorporate AI automations within your business, or you're still trying to figure out how to make a business out of AI automations, I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can book a one on one video call with me completely free, as well as a link to my school community. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.